Going bounce except for rock and super saiyan K.O. can't on in them guys believe that when I'm done They know that I ain't playing with them anymore I'm going to make a man who shit Destructive list I ain't the one to fuck with What's up, my wizards? It's Deb from SBMTG on the YouTube.com down there. We like magic, and today I've got the fastest deck that $25 can buy you in Aether Revolt Standard right now. This is Mono Red Aggro. We just got the report back from the first tournament of the standard season, SCG Open Columbus. And if that tournament is any indication, then yes, we have some decks in this format that'll play turn four combos against you. And we have decks in the format that'll get like eight power on the board on turn three. So we have to go really, really, really fast if we want to be successful in an aggro deck. If we want to go up under everything, we have to play a bunch of one drops and also Reckless Bushwhacker. But to that end, we're going to play 20 different creatures in this deck that are one mana or less. So let's talk about these one drops. We're gonna play four copies of Falcon Wrath Gorger and four copies of Village Messenger. Falcon Wrath Gorger is just a one mana, two power guy, so in a heavy aggro deck, we just have to play him. That's pretty much all there is to say about that. And then Village Messenger is, uh, you know, just a really good Raging Goblin. He's just one mana for a 1-1 one, one haste. Go ahead and knock in a damage on the play, no matter what. That's cool. And then he can also become just a two-power guy you only invested one mana in that is also hard to block. Menace is a pretty cool ability. So I want to play all four copies of both of these guys because they're pretty solid one-drops and can get in for a bunch of damage early. As far as the rest of these one drop and under creatures, I'm going to play two copies of Inventor's Apprentice, four copies of Bomac Courier, two copies of Hope of Girapur, and four copies of Ornithopter. Let me talk about all these real quick. Well, Inventor's Apprentice, there's only ten artifacts in the deck. You're looking at all of them right here. So I don't want to go overboard here, but it's still a pretty good creature. And on turn one, you can go like Ornithopter and Inventor's Apprentice, and that's a pretty sweet play right there. Courier also does a pretty good impression of Raging Goblin, and sometimes the ability to sack him and get a couple extra guards is really, really, really important. Um, so there's that. And, you know, he's an artifact for Apprentice, just like the other two there. Um, both of our Thopters are pretty good for different reasons. Ornithopter looks um, pretty bad, but he's a lot better than you might think, because he's got a bunch of functions. He's an artifact for Apprentice. We've got a bunch of pump spells in the deck, so even Ornithopter can get through for three or four damage some of the time. Um, he flies, so that's even more relevant with pump spells. He's also pretty good with Reckless Bushwhacker, allowing us to occasionally play a turn two Reckless Bushwhacker if we want to do that, and sometimes that's better than you might think. You know, Gorger on turn one into Ornithopter and uh, Reckless Bushwhacker turn two can actually end up doing a fair amount of damage for you. As far as Hope of Garipur, this is also an artifact for Apprentice, and it's good, just like Ornithopter, with all the pump spells in the deck, but the ability to sack it and keep them from casting non-creature spells is ridiculous. You know, we can keep stuff from being countered that we really don't want to be countered, so that's cool. We can also keep them from playing creature removal in a lot of situations. We can keep them from playing Planeswalkers on their next turn, which is really relevant against a couple of decks in the format. So this is cool. Hope of Garipur, just a very, very cheap artifact that is evasive. That's cool. Just it wears a lot of hats in the deck, and it looks good in all of them. Our only two-drop creature in the deck is three copies of Kari Zev right here. Kari Zev is just obviously good. You know, she represents two creatures in one card, three power overall, and it takes three different creatures to block this one card, basically. So that's awesome. She also works good with all the pump spells in the deck. You know, she spreads out her power really well. She's just awesome. She works good with Reckless Bushwhacker, too. So, I mean, what do you want? Just the card looks pretty good and is pretty good, it turns out. For two mana, I think this is the best play we can make in this deck right now. And finally, for the creatures, four copies of Reckless Bushwhacker, who I've brought up a bunch of times because it's at the very top of our curve, and it is, in some ways, our entire game plan as far as adding up a bunch of damage all at one time. Coming down on turns three through five, this thing is crazy and can win the game, especially if you play it on, like, turn four. It's going to easily win the game for you as long as you've had a pretty good play line up until then. A big anthem to all of your guys for the rest of the turn and being able to give whatever you played before at haste. It's just crazy. Like, a lot of people have had experience with Bushwhacker at this point. It's been in the format for a while, and it just leads to sometimes, like, anywhere between, like, 10 and 15 or 16 point swings on turns 3, 4, 5, you know, so definitely play Bushwhacker. It's your best path to victory. But we gotta play some spells in the deck, and I'll start with 3 Shock, which I think is a no-brainer in the format. Not only is this a little bit of reach towards the end of the game if we need to get in a couple of damage just to finish them off, or maybe pick off small creatures at the beginning of the game so we can get through with our dudes, all that's important, but it also can take care of the Sahili combo a lot of the time. You know, just respond to the negative two cre um, uh, activation on Sahili by shocking it, and usually it'll die. As far as our pump spells, though, we're going to play two copies of Built to Smash and four copies of Invigorated Rampage. Rampage was at two copies 
here when I first started making this deck, and I have rewritten this deck a whole lot of times, um, <laughs> Invigorated Rampage has just been included more and more every time I've rewritten the deck. Um, Invigorated Rampage is just awesome with our flying creatures, Ornithopter and Hope of Giraper. It's also good for spreading out damage if that's what we need it to do. We can also use it to take out a couple of blockers um, and still trample over for a couple of damage. That's really relevant against all these plus one, plus one counters decks that are running around. We can cast it before combat on turn four and get in a Reckless Bushwhacker, which leads to just enormous swings, and you can get in with an Ornithopter for like five damage. So Invigorated, Invigorated Rampage is great. Uh, Built to Smash is sort of a non-bow with a couple of things we're playing, including Reckless Bushwhacker. You know, you can't go Built to Smash into, uh, into Bushwhacker. You can't can't do that, but it's still just one mana that can get in an Ornithopter for three damage, or it can get an Inventor's Apprentice for five or something, so I still like it as just a one mana thing that can make, like, Bomac Couriers a little bit better, and Ornithopter for that matter, too, um, for a couple of different reasons, so really do want to play Build to Smash, just the cheapest way to give our creatures a big boost right now. And we'll finish off the main deck here with two copies of Kari Zev's Expertise, which some of you may be surprised by. This card is actually ridiculous. Like, this card is absolutely insane. And against all those plus one, plus one counters decks I referenced a second ago, and which took first, second, and third place at SCG Open Columbus, so they're probably pretty good, I would imagine. This card is absolutely a dream, you know? We can take that four-power snake or that four-power Rishkar on our turn three if we're on the draw. A card that's good on the draw is hard to find in aggro, so that's pretty cool. Um, and we can just swing in for, like, Four with the snake, you know, we can swing in with all of our other dudes. We can play a pump spell um, off of the um, expertise and just end up swinging in for, like, again, just like Bushwhacker, like 10, 12, 13 damage all on turn three. That's just crazy. It's in some ways, against a lot of decks right now, like playing two more copies of Reckless Bushwhacker. You'll take their best guy that eliminates a blocker and creates an attacker. That kind of tempo swing is ridiculous. And you get to play something off of it. You'll either play a haste creature off of it or maybe a pump spell like Rampage again. Um, but you can't play um, Built to Smash off of it, another non-bow, which is why we're only playing two Built to Smash. Um, and we're only playing two expertise here because not every deck is going to have something that we can, you know, grab on the er in the early game, you know. And this will definitely be sided out against control and stuff. But even the Sahili combo decks are looking like they're going to play a fair amount of creatures. So you'll even be able to nab something against them on the draw pretty easily. So <laughs> Karizev's expertise is actually just insane. Not only do we get a creature for the turn, which creates a great swing for combat, but we also just get a free card off of it. And like almost every card in the deck can be played off of it, except for Reckless Bushwhacker. I want to point this out before I move on. I know I'm going to get this question in the comments. You cannot surge in a Reckless Bushwhacker off of an Expertise. You can't do it. But you can play pretty much literally any other card in the deck off of Expertise. 22 lands in the deck, and they're all mountains. So 22 mountains. Play those. 22 of them. Here's your sideboard right here. We're going to fill out the play set of Shock. I think that one's pretty easy. We're going to play four Lightning Axe right here so that we can take out the big creatures put into play very early by Green Black. I think that's one thing that's a good use for. And just any deck that's also heavy, heavy aggro, it's good to have this against. Um, built to Smash, just so we can fill out that play set in case we are, our flyers get really, really important. Um, and Hope of Giraper, just against control mostly, so there's that, we want that. More Flyers is also good. Um, copies of Insolent Neonate, in case we want to outdraw, or not necessarily outdraw, but get good card selection against all the control decks in the format. And then Kari Zev's Expertise, we're going to fill out the play set against not only mid-range, but also obviously aggro strategies. This card can be just an absolute blowout against some decks, so want to be able to fill out the play set if need be. And here are your power rankings right here. A final score of 60, which is pretty good for a deck that's only going to cost like 25 bucks. Maybe 20, I think it's like 27 um, after you fill out the uh, sideboard. So really not a bad deal at all for maybe possibly the fastest deck in the entire format. That's the whole philosophy behind this is go as fast as possible and don't hit the brakes, you know. That's why just like a control deck, we're bad in some categories, we're good in others, but it's converse. It's the inverse of the control decks, you know. In this deck, we're really, really high in offense. We're incredibly high in speed, but we are in no way resilient, and that's problem. We flat out suck against Yehini's expertise, but sometimes we can beat them, especially if we're on the play. But 
before they even get to play Yehini's expertise. So there's that at least. Um, and there's also that Yehini's expertise isn't seeing as much play maybe as people thought that it would at least very early on in the format here. What is seeing as much play as it was seeing during testing season is Fatal Push, which this deck also sucks against. And there's a lot of decks playing Fatal Push if you haven't seen. There's also a lot of decks playing Shock as a way to deal with Sahili Rai combo. So we also kind of suck against Shock. So that's why we have so many creatures in the deck is so that we can overcome the super low resiliency and the fact that we suck against a couple of spells that almost everyone's playing right now. So we want to play a really, really wide board. We want to extend as much as possible and we want to play all these pump spells so that we can get in with creatures that are just happen to be unblocked and only have like one or two power. So play like an aggro deck plays, but play smart. A lot of people say that you don't have to be smart to play an aggro deck. I think that's dumb. That's super dumb, honestly. You make so many decisions when you play it in, with an aggro deck, especially depending on what you're playing against. If you're playing against control, you're walking a tightrope of permission to see what you can and can't play. It's not just play all your stuff at the same time and pray that it goes well. That's not, you know, you have to pick the correct play line because aggro often presents to you a bunch of different play lines in turns one through three. You have to pick the right one and you have to be smart about what you know is going going to get removed, what you have to play around, you know, and against mid-range decks like this green-black counters deck, you know that they're going to have eight power on the board by a turn four, sometimes turn three, so you have to be smart, play around that, and sideboard correctly, so don't believe anybody that says that you have to be, that, you know, dumb people play aggro. It's not all about just turning your creatures sideways. Yes, that you want, that's what you want to do, but finding the exact right way to do that is sometimes the hard part and the joy of playing aggro. Before we get out of here, I just want to address that I did not do something, and I'm probably going to get um, stuck in the comments for it. But I didn't do the Consulate Dreadnought um, Siege Modification thing. Don't worry, I'm going to be doing like a Start Your Engines Siege, mod siege Modification deck here really really soon with just a bunch of vehicles don't worry I got that in the works for you but in this deck I did not think that this combo was reliable enough you just don't get it all the time and siege modification is pretty good with things that aren't strictly vehicles so siege modification wasn't bad although it would sometimes lead to two for ones and we're trying to play extremely fast and I did not want to get rid of say expertise and exchange it for this card. I just didn't think that it was quite good enough, and I didn't think that adding Consulate Dreadnought was enough to justify that, because the only reason you'd have Consulate Dreadnought in the deck, other than it's an artifact for Apprentice, is to use with this card. So I just didn't think it was worth using up five, six, seven, eight even deck slots to play this combo. It just wasn't quite worth it. And the Consulate Dreadnought, if you can't Siege Modification it, it is more or less worthless. But for that, I'm tapped out. That's all I got for this one, but take to the sideboard and let me know how you felt about this one. I really feel like this is the fastest deck I could build for under 25, 30 bucks right now, you know. And take this one up to FNM and just surprise the hell out of people, you know. Right now, people are still trying to figure out things like Sahili Combo and Green Black Counters and the best ways to build those decks and the best ways to play them. People are still getting acquainted with those decks. And I just said that you don't have to be dumb to play aggro, you know. You can be super smart and play aggro. But people are still trying to figure out very, very complex strategies right now. And you can just play all reliable and swing in on turn four for the win. But what are we doing next time? A lot of you definitely showed your support for the Clues deck, the Bant Clues deck. I've decided that I needed another day because I thought about a couple of different ways to do it. I'm thinking about using Panharmonicon in that deck, and I think that might actually be really awesome. So I've held off production on that deck, pun included. Um, for a couple of days so that we can see if that strategy works or not. But in the meantime, I've got a bunch of good decks coming to you. I've got another budget. It's like $25 um, mono green stompy deck that I want to show to you really soon. And I've got a $5 all commons mono blue deck that can stand toe to toe with some of the stuff in the format. Let me know if you want to see that thing. I want to give it to you really soon. And that's all for now. If you like the video, like the video, hit that thumbs up button. You can sub, hit the bell to get the notifications on the deck decks and such and all the YouTube rigmarole. And I will see you guys later. I'm Deb from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards.